Now, I don't normally do videos like this. I'm actually into benchmarking simulators, triple screens, virtual reality. I'm running a benchmark right now. I actually have the rig in the background here. Uh, but some information kind of fell into my lap and I tried to find more about it and realized actually it was a leak. I can't find any more information about this. So I thought I would share it with you. And that is the new Arctic Cooling Freezer 3 420. This image I'm showing here is, I guess, the black variant. The description or sales information that it showed me um, mentioned RGB lighting. I don't see any of that on this. And so what I thought I would do is kind of go through a little comparison today, comparing the picture that I have and the information that I learned to what's already out there on the market. I mean, the Freezer 2 is without a doubt one of the most iconic coolers, one of the most popular coolers, and remains one of the best liquid coolers performance-wise. Gone is perhaps the most iconic part of the cooler, which is the CPU block that features the pump integrated into the housing and a VRM cooler, which kind of works like an old school VGA slot cooler. And now we have a much more elegant, more modern, dare I say chic looking CPU group head. This appears to be a render, so the actual retail product might be a little different. According to the specs that I saw, the pump spins faster on the newer model, and it is a improved design. Not only have they kept the VRM fan, but it's increased in size by 50%. It is now a 60 millimeter fan that goes at least 1,000 RPM, up to 3,000 RPM. The cold plate has also changed. The previous model had a square cold plate, but the Liquid Freezer 3 has a native AMD offset mounting design. So it's better suited to uh, deal with a multi-die chiplet that we find on the Ryzen processors. It's, I guess, a five millimeter offset for the optimal CPU hotspot. We'll have to see benchmarks to understand if that actually works. The sales material I saw also includes a contact frame for LGA 7 1700. This is to improve the contact pressure distribution across those processors from 12th, 13th to now 14th gen. And another change is the thermal compound that comes included with the cooler. The Freezer 2 420 had MX4, but the third version here is going to use MX6. No, personally, I like 4 because it's just easier to work with when you're reapplying and cleaning stuff up. But if this is more like a one-time use for you, I'm sure 6 will be fine and maybe even perform better. It doesn't appear that the radiator or the fans have any significant changes to them over the Freezer 2 but I did compile a little table here comparing some of the specifications that I saw to the Freezer 2. So here's a direct comparison on the left, 2, on the right, 3. Now for us simulator users, that offset's really interesting. So is that contact plate for the LJ1700 because we're used to seeing high utilization on very specific cores. So if this cooler can situate itself better on the processor to extract that heat, we could see better performance. Um, I use this guy um, for my, oh my God, such a big box, for my liquid cooling needs. Um, I like EK. They're a good brand. They've been at it for a long time, especially on the high end. I, I think the cooler works really well. The best thing is that it's RGB. I got to stop shaking that. I think the best thing about it is the RGB, which um, does not require software, which is really important for all the benchmarking that I do. I don't want to have extra software uh, affecting my performance results. It just runs straight off the motherboard. So I'm, I'm curious to see thermally if it can still compete with the latest and greatest from Arctic Cooling. Anyway, um, I have some more benchmarks coming out uh, maybe next week, um, and I hope you stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, definitely check out some of my old content. Thanks for watching.